Hey guys, this is Alex C with FirearmBlog.com and today we're back with another Five Guns video. The theme for today is Five Guns That Were Commercial Failures. What you see here is kind of a smorgasbord of different guns that um, were all produced, well, mostly in different countries and uh, we uh, kind of had a little collaboration here. This is uh, Patrick, by the way, who you probably recognize from yep. past videos. And uh, for one reason or another, they just never caught on. So uh, let's kick it off here with a really weird gun that uh, I didn't know existed until I saw it on a gun broker auction. This is called a Bushmaster M17S, S being semi-automatic. Uh, the M17, of course, is the select fire version. You notice when he charged it, the charging handle is in about the worst location possible. If you've got big hands or if you're wearing gloves, you just can't charge the gun. Um, also, the sight plane is only about uh, four or five inches. It's hidden under this Picatinny rail. And if you have an optic on top, then you don't have a cheek weld, you've got almost a chin weld going on. So you can see why this gun was a, was a failure. Um, it's just not ergonomic, it doesn't come together, and then just shouldering it, you can probably tell there's some deficiency there. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I'm not real well versed in the use of this firearm. Did anyone adopt it? I mean, was it? Uh, no, it was, a, it was a spectacular failure based on the AR-18, like so many other guns, but in bullpup form. Um, it was designed actually in Australia, and then it made its way here through Bushmaster. So, uh, it, you know, it's an interesting firearm. I have it in the collection because I got it for almost nothing. It's uh, basically just a giant uh, rectangular piece of You know, it makes me think of is those big cattle guards on Australian uh, trucks. You know what I'm talking about. I though. think I know. What yeah, you're yeah, about it looks that. like some guy just saw one of those and you're like, you know, I think I can make a gun out of that. <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? Uh, they definitely had a pretty cool gun industry before the, the 1996 uh, gun legislation, but um, anyways, it was a commercial failure. They sold them here for cheap. They were so cheap at one time, they were blowing them out at CD&N and then, you know, a long time ago for almost nothing. But I wouldn't recommend anybody buy one. They don't shoot well, the sights are horrible. There's no way to really just make one work. I mean, and it's really rather heavy for what it is. Yeah, and of course, don't forget the bullpup trigger. It's, it's just there. Surprisingly, it's not bad on this gun, I don't think. It's not as bad as other bullpups, but... No, it's not good by any means. Yeah. Well, anyways, moving on to a gun that I would consider spectacular, but was still a commercial it failure. It just didn't catch on. Um, this, of course, is an AR-180. The select fire version is the AR-18. This gun's very famous because almost all modern assault rifles have borrowed its operating system. It's got a very famous uh, tappet design that, imp or that doesn't impinge. It just uh, hits the carrier. Um, this has a dual spring design though as, a, as opposed to the single guide rod and spring design of more modern guns. It, uh, it's all stamped. It was basically designed so other countries that would have difficulty machining aluminum to make M16s could make these in loop. Um, they were one of the first military style rifles brought to the U.S. commercial market, which is kind of cool. They were made in three places, Costa Mesa, California, uh, in England at the Sterling plant, and also by Hawa in Japan. Uh, they made a few of them there. Um, they shoot well, they're really nice, but for some reason they didn't sell well. Yeah, I want to say uh, Nathaniel F. on the blog has had uh, a couple of these maybe, and I think he said he had some issues with these. He had an AR-180B, which was an attempt at modernizing this with a polymer lower that takes AR-15 magazines. Um, I don't believe he liked it, I think he got rid of it pretty quickly, but uh, he'll have to comment on that. But uh, these shoot well. Um, the Costa Mesa guns are, are good. The Howa guns are good. I had a Sterling that I had to get rid of just because this, it was not put together very well. Um, generally, English guns are, you know, decent, but the stock latch well, it wouldn't line up. It was it just. I, 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 I hate wrong. to make the joke about you know things in England, but you know it it holds true. Yeah, well, it's like, especially it's well, like I mean, if you need case. replacement uh, wiring harness smoke for your. Uh, English-made car. <laughs> Sorry, if you're from England, I, I apologize. I, uh, I'm a fan of your country. But anyways, yeah, it's a great gun. It's a cool gun. You can actually find them for pretty good deals. They just didn't sell well. Um, I think it's because they were priced competitively with SP1 Colt AR-15 derivatives. So why would you not get the better gun? I, I agree with you. Um, I know, and, and some people are really fond of this gun. Uh, I believe there was a Texas Ranger who wrote, wrote a book, uh, you know, One Ranger or something like that. Um, and it, he seemed to just love it. Uh, I even think he went so far as to comment that he didn't like the AR-15 and preferred this. 
But I, it may be a perfectly viable gun. It just didn't catch on here. Well, there was one place where they caught on that we were talking about. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, the IRA used these. The IRA was quite fond of these. They actually turned them to Widowmaker, and um, I believe they, they used them to a great extent, or at least as much as they possibly could. Oh, well, yeah. Because they came from Sterling, England. Presumably, they uh, made their way over to the Irish, uh, the uh, Emerald Isle. You know, and they used them enough to go ahead and... Uh, you know, cement themselves in the culture yeah. of the IRA. So, anyways, yeah. So it was a failure, but it's a good gun. It's unlike the M15S. It's a it's a great gun. But uh, next up is the uh, a modern gun, a more modern gun that uh, has been very controversial. This, of course, is the Bushmaster ACR. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm is all I have to say about it. It's you know we were promised a lot when Magpul designed the Masada. Magpul did a great job designing the gun. However, Bushmaster's done a poor job oh, producing the gun. I remember reading the articles a few years before this came to market, and um, I was I, I saw the articles. I was like, you know, I'm buying one of those. And then it was produced, and it just didn't deliver. Yeah, uh, absolutely, I'm, we were promised caliber conversion kits. Which yeah. it's been years, and there's been no there's caliber none. conversion kits. We're promised, you know, all sorts of things, short barrels, and this and that, and uh, they they have failed to deliver. It's almost like they've forgotten about the gun. You know, I really think they have, because I I, mean, I don't know, maybe the numbers just don't add up. Maybe it's not quite as profitable as something like the Area 15. Right. Or, also, they they promised an MSRP of something around 1,500. Yes. Came to the market 2,000 dollars. Which that made a lot of people mad, understandably. I'm one yes. of the suckers that bought one because I thought, yeah, I'll pay the extra money because. I want 6.8 SPC, I want 762 by 39 and if someone from Bushmaster is watching this video, which is unlikely, I want my caliber conversion kits. <laughs> but uh, that's probably not going to happen. It doesn't seem Yeah, like no, I don't think it's going to happen, Alex. Uh, it, but, I mean, it's a great gun. Yeah, you know? no, it, it shoots well. Uh, some people have problems with them. They say they're fragile, but this one specifically, it's worked well. I run it suppressed um, sometimes. and. and I really don't have much negative to say about it other than they haven't delivered on what they promised they would have. Yeah, it, have they had devoted the resources to this gun that they should have? I think it could have been something really it fantastic. Really, it really could have been something, but nonetheless, it, it wasn't. It isn't. No. They are for sale, though. <laughs> they are for sale. You can go buy these right now, and I'm sure they. You know, some of them had birthdays sitting in gun shops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, it's really a shame. It is. So uh, that's the ACR. Unfortunately, it never uh, never came to be. Now, next up is a, is a gun that was just a spectacular commercial failure, and I'm almost not 100% certain why they made it. This is a Benelli MR1. The MR1 uses the same operating method as some of Benelli's shotguns. It's a 5.56 rifle, or 223. Some people call it the European Mini-14. Um, one thing that, when you pick it up, you realize is a blatant uh, design flaw, is you can't reach the magazine release with your finger by, without taking your hand off of the grip, which these I, days, I, that's just unacceptable to me. Yeah, I, I don't understand why they would have even done that. I, I, maybe it has to do with the action used. Uh, yeah, I know they make hunting rifles that use the action, and I think basically they thought, hey, we'll add a pistol grip, make it tactical, sell to those, you know. That yeah, I mean, that. if this gun were produced with a, a nice wood stock and, you know, a, a, just a, it could be a great hunting rifle. I just don't see the point of it being tactical. A tactical rifle, yeah. So anyways, it, it failed. It doesn't have a threaded barrel. Um, it takes AR-15 magazines, though, which is great. Um, it functions fine. I mean, people who have them on the internet say they like them. They're popular in California because they have a featureless, uh, featureless, uh, you know, non-band version where they can have detachable mags. So I think it's found a nice market there. But all in all, do you know anybody else other than me that has one of these? No. Yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know why anyone other than you would buy one, to well, be honest. Thank you. But, uh, um. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it is a strange gun. However, I'll probably do a review on it just for, you know, why not? Yeah, I, when we pulled this out of the safe, we were talking about it. We, we just can't come up with a use for this at all. Especially in the days of $600 AR-15s. I mean, I mean this, <sighs> this doesn't have a market here, at least in places where we're not California and we can have... You know, pistol grips and stuff. Even then, I'd rather have a Mini-14 than this guy. I, I agree with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, this may be a little bit more reliable than the Mini-14 if you're Who getting knows, it dirty and know. muddy or something. I don't know. But, I mean, it doesn't even look cool. Yeah, it doesn't look cool. I'm sorry, Benelli. Yeah. Anyways, last, but uh, eh, not necessarily least, this is no particular order here, is a gun we recently did a video on. Uh, this is an Egyptian Rashid rifle. 
Now the Rashid is, is interesting. They only made, I think, 5,000 of them. It's based on the Hakeen, which is an 8 millimeter gun, which is based on the Swedish AG-42 Jungmann. So it's actually DI in its purest form, not the AR-15 DI, but gas is actually just slammed into the carrier. That's how it works. And I would want to touch on that. Uh, this gun was issued with one magazine. Their training doctrine in uh, uh, Egypt at the time was to use stripper clips to reload it. And when we tried doing that to do the article, uh, I would burn my fingers on this gas tube just about every time I put my finger in there to push around in the mag. Yeah. It is one of the biggest pains in the rear end. It's, you know, it's one of those things where they took a gun in a large caliber that worked in that large caliber, and I think when they scaled it down, it didn't work, as opposed to when they went from the AR-10 to the AR-15, it really did work well after some trials yeah. and tribulations. But uh, there's a reason they ditched this really fast. They only made a couple thousand. And then uh, they started using the AK like that. I mean, it just went the way of the dinosaur. There's not that many. Thank God. <laughs> they don't. Th this particular example kind of works most of the time. It's got a kind of a finicky gas regulator. And you uh, see the regulator right here. Yeah, it just it it, it failed. It, it failed spectacularly. I think Egypt's the only one that actually used it you in know, any capacity. But I like unlike wrong, but so. unlike a couple of these other guns, like the uh, the AR-180 and the uh, ACR. There is a reason that this one failed. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's got faults. It's got penalty design faults that just really hindered its its adoption yeah. and use. So, I think that's a, that about sums up our video here on five guns that were commercial failures. Um, <laughs> you know, not to say they're all bad, not to say they're all good, but uh, you know, here they are. Anyways, this is Alex C with FirearmBlog.com. Thanks again for helping me out with this video, Patrick. It was my pleasure again. If you liked our video, hit the subscribe button, and we'll keep pumping these out for you guys.